Whenever a production company sets out to make a movie, it's really starting a business from scratch. You line up investors, hire employees, and hope for the best. Tonight, we visit the Dream Factory behind Something Wicked. Eyes lock it up and roll sound. Anytime you're starting a really cool project, I mean, you're so excited. The possibilities are endless. The sky's the limit. And uh, you're looking for ways to overcome all the obstacles that obviously are going to come up. But uh, it's incredibly exciting. For Darren Scott, directing the feature film Something Wicked is a milestone in his career. A former chemical engineer, Scott gave up the rigid corporate grind for a life in the movies. And he's never looked back. So people ask me, well, didn't you waste four years of college? doing physics and all this stuff when you don't use it anymore. I'm like, no, it taught me to think. Scott has an easy manner with his actors. He respects their craft, but he's also a realist. On a tight shooting schedule, he doesn't have the luxury of endless retakes. I'm not Stanley Kubrick. I'm not going to do that 50 times. Something Wicked is a mystery thriller, the brainchild of screenwriter Joe Collery. Something Wicked was um, uh, derived from uh, one of the Shakespeare tragedies. Uh, which was kind of about, uh, you know, doomed love and uh, things of that nature, and uh, we thought it was a great title for a thriller. Writing the script is a solitary sort of thing, but once you actually get into the process of making the movie, and you have all these contributions from all these other people, all these other talented, artistic people who all want to make, you know, a good movie. So it's a blast. I mean, nothing's more fun than that. The first day of filming couldn't have happened without weeks of pre-production. Endless meetings, location scouting, and then the casting of smaller roles. All right, Christine, you okay? Uh, be careful in there. I just uh, mop the shower area. Over several days, Eugene casting director Linda Burden-Williams saw regional actors from as far away as Portland. I think a lot of people are moving here for quality of life. And they are L.A. people. They've been in the business for years and years and years, and they love living here. So I think they're wanting to bring the business here so we can have um, work in our own area. That means the talent pool is deeper than you can imagine. One in his 50s, a shot. But not everyone gets a shot. Linda's looking for a self-assuredness that she can spot a mile away. You have to have the confidence on set because there's going to be 40 different people looking at you and all, the focus is on you and you have to be able to get the words out of your mouth and know what the character's going to do and have the emotion and, and look the right way at the right time and make the right spot. There's so many things going on. You know, you have to see that in the people that come in to, to audition. Recognize him as any one of her friends. An actor herself, Linda is kinder than most casting directors, often giving hopefuls a second, even a third chance. Good job, Nathan. Thank you for coming. If they can't make it through the audition, I don't have the confidence in them to put them on set or to put them in front of the director. A few of the actors were good enough to earn a callback with Darren Scott. What you've described, I'm thinking DID. Oh, I was thinking PTSD. Possible. From what you've described, I'm thinking DID. Oh, I was thinking PTSD. <laughs> Impossible. With the actors signed on, another crucial aspect of the production falls to Hollywood veteran Leslie Newfell. Reading the script and doing a breakdown of how many costumes each actor wears and for what scene and what they should be wearing for that particular um, thing that they're doing at that time. To the producers, Neufeld's contribution is a godsend. After all, she's worked with some of the greats. Well, an older one is Spinal Tap. I made most of the clothes in that movie. That was very fun. And I worked on Waterworld, The Postman, Gone in 60 Seconds with Nick Cage and Angelina Jolie. And then there was Pirates of the Caribbean. Johnny Depp's merry band called for boatloads of grunge. Something Wicked, though, is a jeans and t-shirt movie. Nothing more elaborate than that. Yet, it still requires the same attention to detail. Yeah, you can't just buy something from the store and just put it on someone. It has to be, you know, properly acclimated to the character. And acclimated to the color palette of the movie. In the case of Something Wicked, the hues are somber, much like damp Oregon in the late spring. But our director is still smitten. The scenery here is so beautiful. And uh, it's just so picturesque. Most of the films that I've done are more urban. They take place in the city, and I come out here, and there's logging plants, sawmills, rivers, 
bridges, beautiful waterfalls, moss-covered trees. I mean, it's all just as a completely different milieu than I'm uh, used to working in. It's a rare man who can look beyond the rain and the gloom and see a silver lining. You find your dream a lot of times, or your dream finds you. Good! Reset it! Going back to work! And coming up on KZI 9 News at 6.30, we'll have a more in-depth look at the life of costumer Leslie Neufeld. She runs a costume rental shop in Cottage Grove, by the way, but has had a long and interesting career in Hollywood.